there are echoes of what we have already begun to hear. And there is a teaching that at the end of time, when there will be peace on earth, we will come to recognize God's name and God's presence in awe. There are, according to Jewish tradition, both masculine and feminine aspects of God, as there are within each of us. One of the names for God, Shekhinah, which is the female aspect of God, comes from the root Shachain, which means to dwell, and also means neighbor. And it speaks to the indwelling presence of God that is present in this wor world, and that is present in each of us. And when we are able to make the connections between all of those sacred sparks within each of us, then we are able to bring healing to this world. And through that, God's rule will be able to be manifest and peace will be on earth. And so at the heart of Judaism, our central prayer, which comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter six, Shema Yisrael, Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. Hear, O Israel, the eternal is your God. The eternal is one. And right now we see difference, but when we truly can begin to hear and listen through the different manifestations of sacred, then we will come to recognize and hear and listen for the unity that is greater than all that divides us. In Judaism, we recognize that we listen both through meditation, through prayer, through living, and through study. Through study, through text, and stories. As we dive deeper into stories, we begin to listen and hear, and we practice the act of listening that helps us to then go into the world and hear the nuances that can make for healing and blessing. How we listen makes a difference. If we listen with an expectation of hurt, that is what we will hear. If we listen with an expectation of reverence, that is what we will hear. Jewish tradition says that as we study, one person should not study alone, but always at least two. And that two people, when they sit together and they study a text, what they need to begin to do is they need to begin to understand that text to pull out from it multiple versions and interpretations. The more we can begin to hear and deconstruct that text from the literal narrative to the deeper meanings, the more we can begin to hear and listen for Shekhinah, for God's wisdom that is indwelling the more we can begin to recognize that each of us only has a part of the whole and that God is endless, the more we can begin to recognize God's presence. And indeed, Martin Buber, the great Jewish theologian, taught that we encounter and experience God most profoundly through our relationships with God, with nature, and with one another. And that there are two kinds of relationships, I it and I thou. I it is where I look to the other, be it nature, be it a person, be it religion. And I see it as a utilitarian object, it. And I look to it as a way of gaining more power. I thou recognizes the other as unique, with a capital T, that from which I can learn, and that which will help to inform me. And so the act of listening, of connecting with one another, that is at the core of all of our traditions, and so many others, helps to inform the ways in which we can help to move beyond our left brain logical side to a more unified aspect of self. 